All right, so today's webinar's title is Budgeting Your Organization's Largest and Most Impactful Expense, Your People. Specifically, we're going to talk about workforce planning at your nonprofit organization. My name is Zachary Griggs. So a little bit about JM2, who is sponsoring this webinar today. Uh, we've been around for close to 30 years. I believe today it, or this year is about 29. And that entire time, we've only ever worked with nonprofit organizations. And one thing that we always like to mention to all of our clients and prospects is that we work with many different products. And our focus is purely on how those different solutions can service the nonprofit organizations that we work with. And so we've worked with numerous solutions that we've sunset, we've moved on from, because we're constantly evaluating what's on the market, what's out there, what are the best ways for, for nonprofits to, to plan, to forecast, to use their GL or an HR system, all different types of back office solutions. And that's all that JMT focuses on for the last 29 or so years. Some housekeeping notes. If you have a question, there's a, a chat box or a question box please feel free to submit it as soon as it comes to mind. Megan's going to keep an eye on that, and then I'll allow time at the end, and we'll just catch up on those questions. In the event we run out of time at the end, we will send responses to those questions with the follow-up email. So we will get to your questions, even if we don't have the time. Also, after the webinar, we're going to send you the slide deck. There's only about five or six slides. I like to spend most of my time in the actual product, but we will send those to you along with the recording, this recording of the webinar. A little bit about myself. As I mentioned, I'm Zachary Griggs. I am the FP&A Practice Director. I've been with JMT for about eight years. It'll be eight in June, I believe. Uh, the first four of those years, I was the Director of Finance at JMT, and I always like to mention that because I was the end user of a lot of solutions that we uh, provide and support for our clients. So whenever I'm going through a presentation, I'm implementing, I'm supporting a nonprofit, I always like to bring to the table my experience, some of the issues and uh, friction points that we ran into that led us to look at these solutions that we use. And I've been, had the luxury of being on both ends of the tables with those solutions, using them on a day-to-day -day basis as well as providing them to our clients. And here there's a few different solutions I've worked with that JMT supports, but today we're gonna focus on the Venice solution that is going to make your workforce planning process much more efficient and uh, powerful. So today's agenda, we're going to look at, at first we're going to talk a little bit about Vena. What is Vena? That might be new to a lot of you on this call, but we're going to give you a quick overview of that. Next, I'm going to get into how you can manage forecasting your staff, your overall workforce, and go through some specific scenarios, uh, things like your hires and fires, uh, if you need to have merit increases, things like that. We're going to account for those and walk through how Vena can make it you more efficient with planning for those things. We're also going to get into what if scenarios. So currently, the vast majority, I presume, are, of us are living through a crisis that has impacted how we budget and how we plan. If we had a budget we created three, six, nine months ago, it is highly likely that that budget no longer stands true as far as how things look for your organization today because of, for whatever reason, if you're an events-based organization, if, you didn't, if funding fell through, if different revenue streams have dried up over this last month and a half, a lot of things have changed. And so we want to walk through today how Vena and a tool like Vena would allow you to come up with these what-if scenarios. And not only create those what-if scenarios, but making the process efficient. Because if it takes you two months to put together another uh, scenario or even a month, then by the time you get through that scenario, you have to get right back out to the drawing board and do it again. So it's important to be both efficient and also accurate and effective in going through creating that what-if scenario. And then lastly, we're going to get into looking at some reports. Whenever I look at a solution, there's really two main factors I like to consider. What is the process of getting data in? And then also, what is the process of getting data out? And both of those for a solution to be effective and help an organization, help the decision-making process, both of those boxes need to be checked. On this slide here, we have uh, some uh, corporations that Vena works with. These are all their clients. That slide's a little bit outdated. I think they have over 800 uh, customers at this point. But a little bit about Vena. They were founded in 2011 and they are a cloud-based solution. They were founded in Toronto, but the majority of their clients are based out of the United States. They work with both for-profit and not-for-profit, but JMT specifically only works where their nonprofit arm that works with all the nonprofit organizations. 
Now you'll notice on this slide there's some larger companies here, White Castle, Nike, Coca-Cola, Arizona Cardinals, some very large companies that are currently leveraging Vena. And I always like to highlight that because what that really convinced JMT of is that the product is scalable. So it will not only help address some of the things that you run into today as you go through your workforce planning process, but if it looks different in 6, 12, 18 months down the road, the tool is going to scale with you. Because the big thing that JMT keeps in mind when evaluating different solutions is how can uh, – we don't want our clients to evaluate getting onto a solution, but then two months, two, let's say two years later, they have to, they grow out of it. They have to evaluate some other solution. They have to go back to the drawing board to come up with what they're going to use. We don't want you guys to have to continuously be changing and evaluating those solutions. JMT does that on our end. We're constantly looking at the market, keeping an eye on what's out there, and then we're going to uh, ensure that we're bringing in front of you what is the solution that we find to be the most effective that is out there. And Vena is one that can last, that can scale with you as your organization scales, as it changes. If you add new locations, you add new entities, things like that, multiple currencies, this product is able to account for those types of things. All right, so a little bit more about Vena. So it's a cloud-based solution anywhere in the world that you have a network connection, you can log in. I always recommend using Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. But one thing that it does that really differentiates it a lot from the other solutions out on the market is that it leverages Excel. And what I mean by that is if I toggle over here to – this is my – just an open workbook that I have within Excel. It's not like Excel. It's not a version of Excel. It is truly my Excel. And what I have is this Vena tab up top. So all that it requires in order to make – turn essentially turn your Excel into a collaborative cloud-based tool is a simple plugin that shouldn't take you more than 30 to 60 seconds to install. So there's no requirement for IT to do any type of software downloads or uh, recurring updates. You just simply install it once, and then you're able to now leverage your Excel in a more collaborative nature. Because of that, it's much easier to learn. So the vast majority of the individuals that take finance roles have worked in Excel. I personally still use Excel quite often. You know, we can create reports. We have uh, all these different functions and formulas that we can play around with in an Excel uh, sheet. So you don't give that up when it comes to Vena. Vena leverages Excel as that framework that you're building these templates on. And it, essentially what I always like to say is that it removes the bad and it allows you to uh, – and it keeps the good. So if you think of the things you like about Excel, the flexibility and power, it gets rid of the things that you dislike, things like broken formulas, multiple versions that, uh, that are conflicting and you have to figure out okay, which one is the, the latest and greatest, things like that. It addresses all of those but allows you to keep that flexibility and power that you, in, that you enjoy within Excel. Because it's cloud-based, it also integrates really well with a lot of other solutions, uh, specifically cloud-based solutions like Intact, Salesforce, uh, NetSuite, Microsoft Dynamics, all of these different solutions you can have feed their data into your Vena database. You can create those connections between the two. Vena is a, is a tool that consolidates many different sources. Specifically today we're going to talk about personnel planning. So if you wanted to have your data come from Paycom or ADP, Workforce Go, you can have it feed over from those sources right into Vena, and then you don't have to worry about manipulating it or doing any type of Excel gymnastics to get it from one place to the next. You can also leverage Vena to do a lot of uh, uh, board report finance packet creation. It, not only does it work with Excel, but you can also leverage PowerPoint and Word. So whichever your preference is as far as creating those types of templates on a recurring basis, you'd be able to get the data out of Vena in that clean format without having to worry about adjusting numbers or manually moving things around. You simply hit the, the Run button, take that report, and you're ready to go. And then you can spend your time analyzing those numbers and instead of doing those manual tasks of moving things. And that's a big focus before when I mentioned the, the data output, ensuring that that's straightforward. Vena leverages this board-ready reporting, making that process much more efficient for you. And then, of course, there's the robust audit trail within the system, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Uh, within Excel, one thing that always come, came up for me is that you can't figure out – it's very difficult to figure out who, can, who changed the number in a cell. Who went into my template and went into this Excel and made a modification? Who broke this formula? What number did they change? from last week to this week, where in Vena, you're able to go in there and you can run an audit trail that's going to tell you exactly who that user was that made that modification, when they made that modification. So it enhances the manager view of their staff if you have multiple individuals that are involved. 
So specifically today, we're going to get into workforce planning. Uh, a few things that we're going to talk about is we're going to look at accurately forecasting the cost of your current team. So everybody has an HRIS or a payroll system in which they are running their payroll on a recurring basis out of that system. So how do we get that data into Vena, into a, this solution where you can use that as the baseline? Because whenever you're creating a budget, the first thing you want to do is first look at your current roster. What does it look like today? The next thing that you want to take a look at is figuring out, okay, what's going to happen over the next, let's say, 12 months? What's, what's going to happen to that roster? Are we going to have some merit increase, maybe some COLA? Are we going to have some mid-year uh, hires and fires, maybe some retirements mixed in there? You might open a no, new location, things like that. So how does, but we want to start with our current roster, make sure it's efficient to get that into the system, and then from there you want to build out and make sure that you're able to easily manipulate what the next 12 months or even further out look like. You also want to manage the different adjustments that you may need to make. You might have one-offs. You might have a criteria when it comes to COLA, but then on another instance, you have a bonus, a one-time bonus that you want to account for that you know will get paid out in, let's say, Q3. You want to be able to account for those within the, the tool as well. And then also the multiple scenarios. You might say, okay, what happens if, because we didn't get this funding, what if we add or we have to close this office? And this is the impact that it has on the staff at that location. So for the organization, big picture, what does that mean? What does that mean for us? What does our bottom line look like? How do our operating expenses look for the next six to 12 months? And then also evaluating the trends that it's telling us. If we, what are the, what's the growth of our headcount? Maybe the growth by our different locations. How many staff do we have at these various locations versus the revenue we have being generated from those locations? How do those tie out? Where, where are our programs in need of some additional headcount? Maybe we're overstaffed in certain areas. So being able to see that in the reports in a dashboard type of view. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is toggle over to the actual product and go through that. Right. So here I just have another tab. I'm in Google uh, Chrome here. I'm just logged in as a user. This user's name is going to be Frank. And once you log in, as I mentioned before, it's cloud-based. So you simply go to any browser. You go to Vena.io and you use your email address and then you log in. And it takes you at first to this page. And you'll see in here that I am the, under the Manager tab. So what I'm going to show you now are some tools that enable the manager to be more effective in their process. So in here, you'll see I have numerous different processes. But specifically, we're going to look at this workforce planning one. If I click on this, what it does is it brings up a workflow for me. So the first thing when it comes to a manager of a larger team, let's say your team is made up of 10, 20, multiple, you know, it could be 100 different staff that in some way are contributing to the creation, in this case, of your, your plan, your workforce, your uh, personnel planning model. Each of those individuals plays a different role, plays a very specific role. And it, without a workflow tool to map this out, it's very difficult to figure out, okay, how do I get from point A to point B, from my start to my finish? How do I map out exactly what needs to happen in order for me to come up with what my workforce will look like, what this piece of my organization's overall reporting looks like, how do I ensure I hit that goal? Let's say that that uh, date is it's two weeks, so I need to pull this together. I need to involve all these different staff members. Each one of the boxes that you see on the screen represents some type of task that needs to happen. Now this is a very streamlined, straightforward approach to making sure that I have my workforce planning updated. But if you wanted to have it more robust, or if you want to branch this off to be just a piece of an overall, let's say, a reforecast that's including some non-personal expenses as well, you can, you can do that. This tool is completely customized to what your process looks like. You'll see in here, if I go to the start, I have this import of existing staff from my HRIS. So that could be ADP, Paycom, Workforce Go, any of those solutions that are out there. You want to get the data, that initial roster, as I mentioned before, from that system into Vena. So this would be your first step. From there, you shift over here to this personnel forecast. Once you have your roster in the system, you need to modify it. If I double click on this, you'll see a few different fields within here. So this is where you're able to assign various owners to the process. In this case, Frank's going to own that, this specific task. If you had, let's say you wanted to break this up by different departments, you could easily do that. You'd have each of your different departments. You'd have the owner of, who, of that process for, let's say, IT versus finance versus development, et cetera. You can assign those different users their specific task. You can also have support workers. So maybe you have a department head. 
And then that department head has a team of individuals that they want to contribute as well to this process. So they can be set up as support workers. So now you have multiple people from these teams all accessing the system. You can also set up what's called watchers or view only. And that could be somebody that simply needs visibility into the process, but they're not contributing any type of data. They want to see how IT is doing, how they're budgeting at that location, but they don't need to be able to go in there and make any modifications. Maybe it's your manager that's in there. Maybe it could be some exec that just needs, wants some visibility into the process, but they can be added here as a user. Down here you have your forms. And the way to think of the forms or the templates, these are like the Excel files that you'd send off to your various staff. So if we're going through and we need to plan what the, our staff look like, the workforce looks like for the next six to 12 months, then my first thing I would do is I would update my Excel template and then I would send those off via email to all the individual department heads, uh, program directors, et cetera. What this allows you to do is create the, a single template. It could be multiple templates if you have different formats. Maybe your programs look different than how your indirect departments look. So you're able to set up that single template and associate it with this specific task. And so in this case, this is Frank doing his planning in that one template. And that could look different than my programmatic template, and they can have their own. So you're able to add multiple forms if you'd like. But it streamlines that interaction. So rather than worrying or about sending emails out and then receiving them back via email as attachments or putting them into a shared network that you have to download up and then put back in or check out, this streamlines that entire process. Venno's overarching approach here is giving Frank or your end user a one-stop shop when it comes to any type of planning. And this could be, in this case, it's personnel, but it can also be for other areas of the organization as well. I can put in some instructions. So as Frank's manager, I'm able to go in here and I can put in some notes. Maybe I want him to include some more context uh, related to a new location that he wants to open or some new programs that we're developing. This is just free text here. I can also put in some documentation. And so this is all going along that line of one-stop shop. Frank logs in, he can access the, the exact attachments right from here. He can see the instructions, he can see the template. There's no need for him to go into a separate location and to get those. I can also go in here and I can assign different dates. In this case, this is due on the 25th. So in two days, this is gonna be due back from whomever is responsible for this task, Frank in this case. I can also use smart dates. Smart dates for a multi-stage workflow, if I go over here, so if this, say that finance is doing the import, and finance takes a little while to load my roster from our ADP system into Vena, if they take a little bit of extra time, I don't want that to negatively impact how long Frank has to do his planning. So you can do a smart date that says Frank has like three days after he receives it from the prior task. So you can set it up that way too. So after Frank's done submitting his modifications to the budget and proposing what his next 12 months look like for his staff, it goes to, in this case, an approval. That's his manager. That could be, and that could be any user. It could be a director. It could be a CFO. Any user you want to associate with that approval of that specific submission, it will automatically, once submitted via Vena, will go to that manager in an email notification that lets them know, hey, please take a look at this. And there could be some comments in there, some context from Frank to their manager, but it streamlines that handoff from one person to the next. It makes it more efficient as you go through the process. You don't have to, and it's keeping track, Ven is keeping track of all these different stages as you go through. So you don't have to worry about tracking down, oh, did I send that email off? Did I let this person know that they should be in there and taking a look at it? You don't have to worry about any of that because the system is going to track it for you. So after they approve it, that's that green arrow, the red arrow here reverts it back to the personnel forecast. And then let's say that we have a second step in this process. We've collected our roster and modifications to it, and now over here we want it to be allocated. We're going to allocate down our staff to uh, some specific programs or contracts or grants. You're able to have it as a second stage here. And maybe there's different users. Maybe this is maintained by finance, but all of this is automated, the flow from start to finish. We have a secondary approval down here for our execs after it gets to the allocations. Once that's submitted and complete, in this case, we have completed our task, we've met our two-week deadline, and now this is all set. And then this process has been complete. Over here, this blue box is access to some reports. So there'll be reports throughout the process that you want people to have access to. So you simply put them in here and you'd say, okay, I want these specific views to be available to these staff. And then they can access those as needed, again, through the cloud. So they simply log in and download them. Once you've created, you've mapped this out, you've decided what you want that process to look like, what you're able to do is use this, what looks like the front of a VCR here. You have a, a play, pause, and a rewind button. 
once you are happy with what your process looks like, you simply hit this play button. And what that's going to do is shoot off notifications, email notifications to every staff member that's involved in this process. They'll be able to simply go in their inbox and they'll say, hey, it's time to get started on this. This is how many days you have, et cetera. But they'll automatically be notified immediately. So you're becoming more efficient in letting all of the impacted staff know. If I click over here to this notification button, this is a quick view into the other notifications that exist. So you simply toggle these on within the system, and then this will just make it more powerful as far as how much interaction is happening from one user to the next, keeping them in the loop as far as what's going on. Again, all automated, and it's just simply flip the switch, and it will take care of it for you. This status tracker is another very powerful tool when it comes to the managers. So here we were looking at, or the prior screen, we were looking at the, the workflow from start to finish when you map it out. This gives you a high level view into how far along are we in creating this, uh, this product, in this case, our finalized uh, personnel plan for the next 12 months. So in here you have, a, this is an indicator of how far along you are. You have a calendar view as far as the due dates. If you have a more robust plan, you're gonna have a lot more going on when it comes to the calendar view. And then down here, you have a just slightly different view from what we were looking at before, but it's going to list out who owes you what, how far along are they, have they gotten started, maybe they, they've already submitted it and it's waiting for approval, but you have clear visibility into how all the different team members are working towards this goal. So, so far everything that we looked at was the, a manager view, and it's giving more visibility to those managers of teams, and those teams can be, there could be numerous teams, so you might have one, let's say your programmatic staff look at their process very differently than one of the, like, like your finance department does. You're able to have different processes for each. So you can really build it around the manager views so they can manage their staff. So now let's take a look at this second tab here. This is the contributor tab. So once I click on this, this is what the vast majority of your users are going to be or what they're going to see. As soon as they log in, they'll see this view here. And a contributor qualifies as anybody that's going to be contributing data to the process. Somebody that might be approving staff, might be inputting some uh, salaries, might be modifying salaries, they're going to be considered a contributor user. And this view is based on the prior view. So however it was mapped out is going to flow through here so that if a, let's say Frank in this case logs in, he's going to only see exactly what applies to him. He's not going to see all the other activity with the other departments. It will only show him what he's responsible for. It's also a to-do list. And that's, so up top you'll notice here in this teal blue color, it has the items that he should be immediately working on. These are the ones that are due next. In this case, he has one day to complete this item. It's coming due very soon. This coming soon section is going to show him what are the items that are not quite due and he can't work on them yet, but things he should have on his radar. And I like this one because it gives visibility to Frank, to your end user, as far as what are the next steps. What are, what, how can I start planning my schedule around what needs to happen as, as far as after I'm done making that first submission. Down here in the view only section, you have two things. One of which is you have the past tasks that have happened. In this case, you can see that somebody has imported the existing staff from ADP has come into the system. So that's already done, and I can see that it, it's been completed. I can also run my reports right from here. So if I click on this report, I can run this at any time where I need to pull it from the system. I simply go in and click right there, and those will always be available to me. So you're giving Frank a lot more visibility into the data as he goes through this process. Let's click here on the personnel forecast, the current item that's due. And you'll see in here it looks very similar to the prior screen, the manager view. And this is where Frank can see all the different instructions. You can see typed out here and also access the supporting documentation. So it makes it very easy. Frank is going to one place and has all of it front and center. He can also go in here and comment. Let's say that there's multiple people in this department and Frank is managing a team of these five or six individuals. They can all go in here and leave comments for each other. And you can even put some attachments as well. So maybe you have uh, an update to your SUI rate and you want to take that, con that file and upload it as a PDF so it's available here for reference. You can easily do that and have that, that communication all documented right within Venom. And then you have your forms. Let's take a look at these. And you'll notice when I click on that, I get this checkout button, and then it turned into check-in. So these templates, I'm just accessing an Excel file from the Internet. So it's going to open at the same pace that it would take for you to open it up at an email, uh, out of a website. It's going to function the same way. The checkout check-in functionality is like a library book. 
So once somebody checks it out and they're working on, let's say, something like the, they're working on the IT budget at the New York location, if that's what they're focusing on, nobody else can change the IT budget at the New York location. It ensures that there's no conflict of entry, something that very common that it happens when you're using just an Excel-based process. Because in the Excel based process, you might get one from one person and then another from another person. And you have to figure out, okay, which one is the one that I need to rely on. In this case, it ensures that only one person is making modifications to that specific area of the organization at a time. And once I clicked on it, it just put a download file for me. And now this is going to open up. It will open again at the same pace that it takes to open an Excel from the Internet. And you'll see here that it already has the framework, but the big difference between opening a standard Excel or using a standard Excel template and Venna is that you get this pop-up here. And you'll notice that again in the background I have my Excel, but this is because of that plugin. There's a connection from the data, the underlying data that links back, to, links back into the cloud. So within here I have numerous uh, dimensions, entity, department, group, year, and scenario. And these will be specific to your organization. So if you have program, grant, contract, project, all of those, anything that you have in your chart of accounts or anything that you slice your, uh, your staff down into that level of granularity, you're able to account for that and build it into your structure. So those will be options when you go in here. And so this person that's accessing it, this could be the department head. This could be finance if they're owning your workforce uh, planning for the upcoming year. It could be uh, an HR. You can have a centralized HR department that's doing all of this. Any, whichever your preference is for your process. But once you go in here, you can choose what you'd like to look at. In this case, I'm going to say Los Angeles, and I'm looking at this department. We're going to look at all the employees at once. You can isolate a group of employees or a single employee if you'd like, but we're going to focus on everybody. You can choose the year. So in this case, if I want to plan out two, three years down the road, you can do that. You can also look at retroactive activity. It's up to how you customize the template as far as how far out you look. And then you can look at different scenarios. We're going to look at budget first, but then you have some what-if scenarios. There could be any number of these. This is where you're able to go in there and effectively think of it like Excel. You hit Save As, you have a new file that you can then play around with and it has no impact on the prior file. It functions in the same way. So you have these multiple data sets that you can say, okay, what if we open this location? What if we close this location? What are the implications? So you're able to play around with those easily right here. So once I've made my selection, I hit this OK button. And then I get this loading screen. And what this is doing is it's uploading the data from Venna right into my Excel. So you see that I didn't have to leave the file. It just simply changed everything on the back end. Now up top here, my Venna tab, before it only had about two icons. But now it has 10, 15 of them about. So within here, one that I, you can leverage is this one here, that choose option. That brings you back to the selection box. So let's say that I was just working on Los Angeles, which I was in. I made my changes, but now I'm responsible for multiple locations, so I need to go to New York. I don't need to leave this template. I don't need to go back to Venna. I just simply toggle over to my next selection. So if you have staff that are responsible for multiple departments, multiple locations, it makes it very easy for them to do all of that right within these single files without needing to go around to back to the, uh, the Venna login and then access the other template. So now that we're in New York, let's take a look at what the content is within this template. I'm a big fan of shading. So that light blue is where Frank is expected to make changes within the system. So within here, any of these white cells, these are things that are populated from your, let's say, ADP system. You've already loaded in the data, and so this gives you a baseline. It tells you who are the individual employees, what, their, what is their ID. It has some data already populated. And if I go in and I try to change this, it's going to give me an error. It doesn't let me change that because these are things that should not be changed, so this controls in place. And that, that's another area where Venna also enhances your use of Excel. The blue cells, however, you can change. So if I came in here and I said that this sales director is actually going to be a manager, you can simply go in and change that, and then once you do, you can save the data. You can also adjust, if you needed to, higher dates, if you had options for, let's say, benefit plans, um, if you wanted to also track, let's say, different unions or different states that people work out of to drive your SUI rate, you can easily do that as columns within the template. In this case, if we keep going over to the right here, we get over to these, a few other dates. If you know that someone's going to retire or you need to close a location, what you're able to do within here is plug in some information. So let's go in and just put in a few dates. Let's say that we knew that 
these four individuals, we had to close that location, so they're going to be terminated. Now I simply key in those dates, and what's going to happen is I'm going to go over to the summary tab. And when I do, you'll see that I have this dashboard high-level view of the data within the system. Up top here, we have some headcount information. I can see my opening headcount, and then I can see, okay, what were my terminations, in this case, in April? And those are those four individuals from the first tab that have been terminated. I can also see down here, I have a chart that's going to give me a visual, a trend line as far as through the year, what does my headcount overall look like? It's also going to pick up any new hires and transfers in and out of that department or program. If I keep scrolling down, I can see how that impacts my total salaries and wages. In this case, we're about 4.4 million overall for our, our, our entire staff. And this is, again, this was purely loaded from our source HRIS system, so we haven't made any modifications yet. When we do, we have these different adjustment lines here. So the structure, this structure within this template is that we want to break out so we can say, okay, if we made this modification to our staff, what does it look like? What's the total cost for that specific change? So it gives you a little bit more visibility into those individual modifications. And then down here you have some visibility into the total revenue and also the total non-personnel expenses within the system. So you can keep an eye on, okay, where's our break-even point? Where is, when is our, our personnel too high? In this case, we have a lot of wiggle room because we have about 40 million uh, in total because of the revenue. But if you had a specific threshold that you want to make sure that your staff or your programs, your departments were not hitting, you could easily put that into the system and that'll be showing up for them front and center at that location. If I go back into the input here, so we've already put in a, a few modifications for, for terminating those for, for employees. But if we keep going over to the right, we can also adjust the compensation of some staff. So by default, you'll see, in this case, there's a lot of hourly staff. But let's switch them over to salaried. And when I do, there's already a, a populated number, in this case, about 208,000. That's because that came over from, the, from your HR system. It loaded what their current salary is. So it gives you a starting point. You don't need to worry about populating this by, from the ground up every single time. It's already been preloaded for your staff. But let's say that you know that they're going to get an increase and you want to raise their salary. What you're able to do is put in this override column, and when you do, it's going to update that salary. And if I go over to my summary tab, this number has also adjusted to account for that. I can also come in here, and let's say that we had a few others. So I'm going to take, and this is just Excel, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. Let's take these two, for instance. And let's say that we want to take these, and we want to increase them by 10%. You can also put in a formula. So I'm able to go in there and simply say, okay, I want to increase both of those employees, their salaries, by 10%. And then by doing that, it's going to flow through and it's going to hit the proper GL accounts, update my, all of my taxes, my benefits, any fringe that's based on the salary will all get updated based on me changing that number. I can also monitor my employees, my hourly staff here, by putting in, they have a default hourly rate, again, that's coming from our payroll system. But you can also override it. So if I want to go in and say that it's going to be 90, uh, hour or dollars per hour instead of 95, you can. You can also adjust, maybe I have a staff member that's going to move to part-time. You can go in there and adjust their weekly hours. All of this is going to continue to update this final salary on the far right. The FTE column here, this is where you can leverage, let's say that you have staff that work on different projects, different departments, uh, different programs. You can say, okay, this individual is going to spend 50% of their time on this program. Oops. We got a decimal there, 0.5. So they have 0.5 in an FTE at this location. And so you'd put the other 0.5 on the other project or program that they're working on. And then that would account for 100% of that FTE. And this is just one way to allocate that staff. Up top here, this threshold, it says under the threshold, this little yellow bar that's working slowly towards the right. What this is, is this is tying back to what I mentioned earlier right here, which is what is that break-even point? And just to show you how this works is if I put in, let's say, two more zeros here, you'll notice that that number goes up. So say that you're adding many more staff and that threshold is a little bit lower than what it currently is, you can clearly see and you can have front and center for Frank in this case, he can ha say, okay, I've overspent because of whatever reason, based on the funding at a specific location or a specific grant. You're able to have that front and center, have that metric front of mind. And just to show you, once that's surpassed, you can put in some rules that stop any type of submission when it goes above that threshold without, let's say, approval. And you can have, you can see here, once I do that, it says exceeds threshold and front and center, Frank needs to make an adjustment. Something needs to change. This person needs to make less than 
quarter billion dollars. Okay. So if I scroll back here, the other things that come up through the year are people get merit increases, bonuses. There's going to be modifications to those staff. So far, all we've talked about is putting in the initial compensation when they start, if somebody leaves, somebody retires. But now, how do you make modifications? Uh, in here, I currently have it collapsed. You have the ability to put in five different adjustments. So if I expand one of these, so you'll see here, and I put this in as five specific adjustment lines so that it flows through over here in this section right here. It'll have each one of these will impact that line. Now, if your preference is that you don't want to have it as free form, you want your staff to be able to say, okay, put specifically the merit increases in, you, know, you can put the COLA increases in, things like that. If you want to make very specific modifications, you can do that as well. But in this case, we're talking about adjustments. So in here, if we hit this drop down, we have two options. One, we can do it as an amount, and the other we can do as a percentage. So if I go in there and let's say we want to increase this individual's salary by 10,000, when I do, what it's going to do is take that 250,000 and then increase it to 260. And I can also choose when I want that to take effect. I can also have it only run through certain dates. And I can say, okay, this is a merit increase. I'm not going to put an end date because it runs, it's now increased his salary. Once I do that, I can go back to my summary tab here and I'll be able to see in this adjustment line, I can see it's about 8,300 because it started in March instead of in January, so he didn't get the full 12 months worth of it, and it straight lines it over those 12 periods. If you want to break that down by payrolls in a month, that's also possible too, but in this case, it's just uh, 24 pay periods for this organization. I can go over here and I can add another one, and let's say to my second adjustment, I can come in and say I want to increase by a percentage, and we want to increase salaries by 2%. And I want that to be effective. Let's start at the beginning of the year. And we'll call this COLA. And when I do that, you're going to see very similar. It then puts in the second adjustment down here. And I can clearly see each of those broken out. I prefer this view so that you don't have everything consolidated into the salary and wages. It lets you better understand and gain more visibility into what do these changes, how do they impact the overall cost at this location for my workforce. And you can also go about doing this three more times if you want. In this case, we have five different adjustment line items. And you can have one person adjusted in multiple ways. They can have a merit increase in addition to a COLA increase. You can have a one-time bonus. Whichever your preference is, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to making those types of modifications. I'm going to close this now. And one thing we haven't seen yet is, in addition to salary, there's a lot of fringe benefit taxes that are at play. So where are those? So if I go over here and I hit this other plus sign, these ones are currently hidden and they're a, these can be referenced if you wanted somebody to have this level of detail. If I click on, let's say, FUDA, I can now see by, for that employee, you can see it's taking their salary and it's going to show me how their FUDA looks through the year. I can also come over and I take a look at, you know, 401k, 403b, if you have retirement plans, you can see your adjustments broken out here life insurance, et cetera. However, many of these benefits and fringe are driving off of your, overall compensation, you can see that flow through here to this side section. And you can put these in view or hide them from you depending on who is looking at this template and how granular you want to be. So I'm going to close this. And so far we've talked about the existing staff, but what about the, the new staff through the year? So if you scroll down, you have this section, the future employee, the new hires. And what we're able to do here is put in a few individuals, Jim, Jane, Joe. And then in here, we can say this person can be an AP, AR, and IT. And if you don't know their name, maybe they haven't, you haven't found the person that's filling that position yet, you can put in there just to be hired AP, you can, whatever mechanism you need to identify that staff that you're adding to your workforce. You can also go in here and you say, all right, there's going to be a future hire. You have not hired them yet. And you can say when they're going to get hired. Let's say 1-1, one, one. let's do 5-1, and then let's do 7-1 spread it out. You can also put in a termination date if they're seasonal, temporary staff. Uh, but let's assume that all three of these employees are going to be rock stars and we're not going to fire them right away. And if we keep going over here to the base compensation, we get to decide how are they getting compensated. Is it going to be hourly, salary? Let's do a couple of these as hourly. And then Joe will be salary. And you'll see that it'll, it'll populate where I'm expected to, pop, to put in information in order to, put, to complete 
this individual's record. So here, their salary is going to be say 100,000, and let's do $30 and $40, and weekly hours, they're both full-time, and they're all one full FTE. And you can see here, after I've done that, I now have their total compensation flowing through. All of the additional uh, fringe benefits, taxes, every, all of that is calculating based on their salary. I don't have to go in there and update any formulas. I also can put in some adjustments if I know there will be any. Maybe that I want to give a bonus to my IT staff after they get through a specific project mid-year. I can account for that as well at this stage. I can plan for that known expense. After I've added those, if I come over here, you'll notice that my line updated, my trend line updated. So now I can see if I scroll up, I have my three hires broken off into March, May, and July. And then here's my hires as well. And then down here, my salary has increased. We're now up to 4.7 in base comp. And then after adjustments, we're about 4.8 million. And I also have my trend or my threshold front and center. So as I get closer to that, it's going to let me know. When everything's done, you've entered in your information, you've made your modifications, you want to submit this to your manager, you simply go up here and hit this Save Data. And just like you would save in Excel, you're hitting Save Data, and what it's doing is it's saving that information up into the cloud. It's saving it into the database for somebody else to run a report and see, somebody else on my team to access. Now, let's say that you have multiple people on your team accessing this template, and you don't know what they changed. So you, rather than pick up the phone, what you can do is you can take a look at I know that we change this field, right? We change it from director to manager. I'm in and I can hit this drill saves button. And what it's going to do is it's going to tell me what value was there and what value is there now, who made that modification. You can see here's the name, here's the date and time that they made the change. So it's very easy to track back who's modified something. And this is both on text fields and numeric fields. Anything that changes in that field is going to let you know. So an extremely powerful audit trail. And this is not only going to show Frank what he has changed, it's going to show everybody that works with Frank what they have changed as well. So it's very insightful for Frank to manage that team. The next question I always ask is, so what if you don't know what cells they changed? How do you know how to trace back where those modifications were made? That's where you go into this audit trail. And then this is going to tell you who's been in this system at all. And you can see here, Frank's been very busy. And so what if we want to take a look at what Frank was working on back, uh, this was earlier today, and what he has changed from today or to the current template. If I open up these two and I just highlight them just like that, I have this compare button down here. And once I do this, it's going to do another load screen. It should only take a couple seconds, and what it's going to do is open up a, a separate template for me that's going to highlight exactly what was modified. And it'll, it'll show you what, if, if five different people made those changes, it's going to show all of the modifications made by all of them. And so it makes it much easier than having to figure out what specific cells were modified. Trying to replicate something like this would be very difficult in Excel. You'd have to trace back, and it's very manual. Whereas this here, you can see it has my exact file, and it's telling us what was modified from that date to today. And if I go in and I hover over any one of these, it's going to tell you I changed the formula. I went from that amount to a specific formula, an increase of 10%. I can see here I changed from hourly to salary. It's going to document every single change in those cells for me. So Frank, it's extremely easy for Frank to see everything that's been modified since the last time he went in, all highlighted. And this will just run in perpetuity, so you can continue to track what changes were made. So I'm going to close out that file. It also brings up this, this is called, you see up top here is the prefix old. This is the original file. This is what it looked like on that date. And so you can always revert back to the historical if you wanted to. All right, so, so far we've talked a lot about the getting the data in. So now let's take a look at getting the data out. What does the reporting look like? You have this access, this dashboard, this view into these higher level metrics. But let's take it a step further and look at a report. So what I'm going to do is come back over here. I'm going to close this. And let's look at this personal summary, summary report. You can see here it doesn't say check out. It just says view. That's because the, it's a report, so nobody's changing anything. There's no concerns around controls. Any number of people can have this report open at a given time. Same concept, though. You go, you go in, and it's going to open up the Excel template. Uh, if you wanted to, if you had the PowerPoint or Word board report set up, it would open up in those as well. They'd be, they'd be uh, accessed in the same way, but open up in different tools. You can also see your selection here. So again, these will be the dimensions that you want to run this by. 
if I go in here and I take a look at this hierarchy though, maybe I'm a manager and I want to look at my entire department, entire program, an entire organization. You can choose what stage in the hierarchy you want to look at. We're going to focus on New York because that's where we did all of our work, but you can also look at the roll up. It's going to naturally consolidate that information. Same concept with department. We're going to look at all employees, same year, and then we also can look at the other versions if we wanted to. So once I hit that, it's going to go through the same process. A couple seconds, it's going to load. So in here, up top, we have some visuals it's giving me my revenue versus expenses with some line, trend lines here through FY20. But I can get down here and I can get into the specific revenues and I can see what's the breakdown for me as far as you know, contributions, event revenue, other revenue, et cetera. So I can see a little bit more detail here. If we keep going down, then we get into the expenditures, specifically the personnel. And this number here, this 4.791, is coming from that other source, that other submission that Frank made in the other area of the system. So if you have a dozen people that are contributing values, they're going to, as soon as they submit that data, save that data, it's going to update here so that in your consolidated reports you have real-time access into how that's impacting your overarching organization's budget in totals. Now, just to show you that connection, so right now we're at 4.791, which ties back to this. But let's go in here, and if we add a couple more zeros to this individual, and we save this data, what we're going to do is go back to the report, and we're just going to hit this refresh button. And you're going to notice all my numbers changed. Everything just updated essentially in real time, as soon as that individual saves, I'm on the same computer, but that person can be on the other side of the world and hit save. As soon as they do and I refresh my report, I open my report, I'm going to get the latest and greatest figures. There's no need to manage different files on a shared network. There's no need to have Excel formulas that link these files together. Everything is interconnected. And this is all going along the lines of you want to be able to be efficient in the collection of data so that the output here, you're able to get that visibility in a timely fashion from all these different sources. So if I keep going down here, we have some other information that's included. You can see your staff benefits, your temp benefits, things like that broken out. So this could be as granular as, as you would like here. But then if I go over this personnel variance report, this is more of a dashboard view. And I'm going to make that number a little bit smaller again, just so it doesn't throw off our graphs. Let's just give that a second. All right, so if we go back over here, I'm going to hit refresh. There we go. So within here, this is more of a dashboard view of the information. And over here I have my budget, which we're working in. And then I also can take a look at those what-if scenarios. And I have a side-by-side -side view of a few key uh, KPIs that I want to keep an eye on. My year-end headcount, I want to see growth in that area. I also want to understand the total salary compensation, how it compares to these scenarios. And if I wanted to, I can toggle over to scenario number one, and I can see that it's going to show me those numbers and metrics related to that scenario. So before on the input template, I could have chosen what if scenario one, made my modifications, hit save, and that's going to update within that specific scenario so that it, here I can look at the variance between the two. And I can toggle between any number of these if I wanted to. It's going to show me over here a different view of the same information. I can see my headcount side by side. I can see here how my salary total compensation compares to my overall revenue, less non and less non-personnel expenses. I can see side by side my headcount by month. I can see a chart of the same information and then the salary information in the same way. So you have a tremendous amount of flexibility. And this could be if you wanted it to be three different versions side by side, you could do that. If you needed it to be uh, longer than a 12-month fiscal year, you could do that multiple years. You can also adjust what this is showing you here for the KPIs that are relevant to your organization. So in closing, the, the two areas that are streamlined by this process is making sure that the collection of data is efficient, giving them, giving Frank in this case, the tools to be able to go in there and populate the information that's relevant, pertinent to your, to his managers, to the CFO, to the board, to those that are consuming that information, making it easy to collect that, that data. And maybe there's more than just one Frank. Maybe there's you know, 10, 15 different departments you need to collect from that are all in working in today's environment in remote locations. So they need the ability to key in that information and in a timely fashion without needing to pass around Excel files and then spend hours that are very, very valuable hours 
moving that data, reconciling that data. The system's going to do it for you. So you make the data collection easy, and then all of that, because of the cloud nature of Vena, allows you to get the data out in an efficient and insightful way. And so the visuals here, they're also, again, customized to what is important to your organization, keeping an eye on those trend lines, looking at your bottom line, the impacts of different scenarios, and so on. But that's everything I had to cover today. So Megan, were there any questions that came up through the suggestion box? Yeah, thanks so much, Zachary. So it looks like we do have a few questions that came in here. And just a reminder, if anybody else has a question that they want to ask, um, if you can submit it into the Q&A section on your control panel, and we'll make sure that those get read out. Um, but the questions that we had come in so far, the first one reads, can Vena support staff across multiple unions with different rates and timeliness for increases? Yes, so on the input here, so if we go back to this, so this is very simplified as far as the modeling, but if you wanted to have a drop down that was feeding in what the union was and then some assumptions related to it, you can definitely have that as a drop down. You'd select and then it would calculate based on that. They can account for that level of granularity. Great, so another question that we had, uh, Zachary says, what if we don't want employee salary information to be seen by individuals who are outside of HR? So you're able to limit the drill down. So in this case, we had one individual that could go in and then look at this on a per employee basis, but then on the reports, it might be in a summary view. So then they would, we would limit their access so they can't drill into it and see it by employee. They just simply see it maybe by department or by location. So it's up to you as far as permissions go, so it's how granular you want that to be. Okay, great. Um, and then the final question that we have so far um, is, can staff see reports if they don't have a login? So it's Excel based, all of this. So what you can do, I could hit the Save As button, and then I could take that file and send it off to another individual. Or you can set them up and have the uh, report scheduled to go into your inbox on a, let's say daily, weekly, and then you can forward that to a different staff member and then they could access it. Just like you would access it here. The only difference is that you're looking at a snapshot in time. They don't have the connection to Vena where they can just pull it down. They would only be able to consume the version of it that you sent to them. Unless they had a user, then they have access to this where they can refresh it live. Great. And it looks like that's all the questions that we have so far. Um, just a reminder, as Zachary mentioned um, at the beginning of the webinar, that if you do think of a question that comes to your mind after the conclusion of the webinar, we will be following up with you and reaching out. So you can always make sure you get that question asked to the person who's following up with you, and we'll make sure that we get that question answered for you. Um, I want to give it just about a minute or two for anybody to ask any other questions they may have. Um, and in the meantime, I do want to let you know um, that we'd love for you to join us for future events and webinars as well. Um, you can find out about those by visiting our website at jmtconsulting.com and clicking on the events tab. We actually have our next webinar coming up um, next Tuesday, April 28th. And it's going to be over nurturing corporate partnerships in the midst of COVID-19 with Jessica James. So we really think that's going to be a great webinar. And we really want you to get signed up for that one. You can find that on our website. Um, and so then looks like we haven't had any more questions come in. So um, Zachary, do you have anything um, before we close out? Nope. just want to say thank you, everybody, for joining. And uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Yeah, great. Yes, same, um, same here. We'll go ahead and conclude today's webinar, um, but we do hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and enjoying this time um, as much as you can be, um, and we do hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thank you so much. Yeah.